800 years ago this month, in 1215, the Fourth Lateran Council called by Pope Innocent III gathered in Rome. It brought together 412 bishops, 71 archbishops and patriarchs, 800 abbots, and thousands of lesser clergy and lay people. This was the largest council that had ever met at the time. And yet, most of us have never really heard of it, right? So well, it's probably not actually true, however, that most of us haven't really heard of it. If you read much theology, you probably, will, you probably will have come across Lateran IV, normally with some passing reference to how it was at Lateran IV that the first formal mention of transubstantiation was made. Or maybe that it was at Lateran IV that it was mandated that everyone confess his sins at least once a year and receive the Eucharist at Easter. Or maybe if you are into the really difficult things, that Lateran IV clarified the idea of analogy by declaring that between creator and creature there can be noted no similarity so great that a greater dissimilarity cannot be seen between them. It's a declaration that we'll see later that gets at the very heart of medieval Catholicism. It was Lateran IV that promulgated the most extensive creed since Nicaea, a creed that placed the Eucharist and the sacramental system at the very center of Christian doctrine. You may have also come across Lateran IV if you are a student of canon law, for it was Lateran, Lateran IV that established many of the procedures for canonical cases that would be developed and per, uh, up through modern times. If you're interested in pastoral care, you will have uh, come across the council in relation to preaching, to the establishment of seminaries, to the responsibility of the parish priest to care for his flock. And if you're interested in the great mendicant orders, the Franciscans and the Dominicans, you would definitely have come across Lateran IV as the launching pad for their great initiatives. And if you're interested in the more controversial sides of Christendom, you will have come across Lateran IV certainly in the sense that it promulgated the procedures that would eventually develop into the Inquisition within just uh, a few years after the council was held. And it formalized the rationale for the Albigensian Crusade, which is the great crusade into southern France against the heretics, the Albigensian heretics. Lateran IV also called for offensive against the Muslims in the Holy Land. And Lateran IV mandated that both Jews and Muslims wear special clothes so that Christians could easily recognize them. So Lateran IV did a great deal. And we come across Lateran IV a lot, although normally in footnotes, normally buried somewhere in the footnote. So why, is the question. Why do most of us know so little about it if it's so important? Uh, why is it that we might know this or that little thing about it? but do not understand what the council was, what, what it was really about, why it was called, what animated it. You know, if you consider this, if you consider that a fairly well-read Catholic could tell you something about Nicaea, right? something about the Council of Nicaea. We know that it marked the transition from the church persecuted to the imperial church. We know about Constantine and all that drama, right? Um, Council of Trent, similar. You know, it's something about the Reformation. It's something about defending Catholic doctrine against the Protestant attack and launching the Counter-Reformation. Similarly, with Vatican II, I mean, we breathe Vatican II. We're living Vatican II. We could all say something about it. Why is it that we can talk about those councils, most of us? And that's because what I would say is that they're epochal. They show us something about who the church is in a certain epoch, right, in a certain time and place. And they mark the church's encounter with the world at that time and place, normally with some sort of a shift in worldview. Um, so we pay attention to these councils, and not so much to, to more minor councils. I mean, who can tell us much about the Council of Vienne of 1312, for example? Why? It's because unlike these minor councils, the apocal councils dealt not with the details of the church in the world, but with the fundamentals, with the very foundations on which the church is built. These councils show us worldviews. Lateran IV is such a council. It is the Great Council of Christendom. That's what they called it, the Great Council. The Middle Ages at its, at its very peak, and yet it remains a blind spot. Right? Why? And the reason, I think, is because the worldview that it shows is one that we have forgotten how to understand. Because we cannot see the whole, we tend to see Lateran IV as a disconnected list of enactments and firsts. It did this and it did that. But rarely it was this. Rarely it was about this or that. So it is, this is so because the medieval world remains foreign to us. Modernity, in its so-called enlightenment, discarded centuries of history, uh, hundreds of years of Christian life, thought, and worship. 
And we, we, we live with minds that are profoundly shaped by the Enlightenment, and we have a really hard time getting back to that medieval worldview, that worldview of Christendom. And that worldview was profoundly different than the Enlightenment view. Very different. Thank you.